everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation, and welcome to our Monday video breakdown. And we're going to look at a six pillar comparison where we're looking at a developing thrower versus a pro thrower. So, what we're going to do is we are going to look at a young athlete who came out here to Arizona from Florida to train. He was converting from the glide to the rotational throw. And then we're looking at current world champion Joe Kovacs, but we're going back to one of his throws in 2017 where he threw 2257, which was his then PR. So uh, we're going to notice at as we go through this, you'll notice the difference in the speed. So Joe here is throwing, this is a 73 high, I believe. I, I should have done my conversion, but 2257, we're in that big 73 foot range. So now we look at somebody like a young thrower and we'll go back and take a look here. So what you're going to see is as they start, we'll play them one more time. They're synced up and you're going to see the difference in the efficiency of the speed. So when we look and we look at them throwing in full speed, you're going to see, you know, it's hard to tell. Now we break it down in slow-mo. We can kind of look. And now what we're going to do is kind of break it into our six pillars. So we're going to look at how actually close they are and what's the major difference that's making up that extra half a second in speed. Remember, the throw happens in basically one and a half seconds for Joe and about two seconds for Ryan. So what we're looking at is the thrower and actually seeing that the difference between a developing thrower and a world-class thrower is actually pretty similar, but it takes years of practice. And this is why we developed, again, the throwing chain reaction system. We're going to look at these six pillars. We're going to train specific movement patterns in each. And what we're going to do is now do a little comparison. Okay, so now we'll take it back and we'll look at the start. And again, you're going to look at the similarities. So you're going to notice, again, what we like to refer to as the setup. Uh, Joe's style is probably in some of his technique has changed up a little bit, which I think is uh, one of the things. Again, you're talking a guy going from 73 to 75 feet. Um, it's going to be small detail changes. But for today's video, what we'll do is we're just comparing. And when you look, so we have a similar setup, and this is what we teach in Pillar 1. How are we going to create replication. You're going to notice again similar positions. Now Joe has always kind of had a little bit more of this straight leg and again his style is a little different than some of the other world-class throwers because of his height and some of his physical attributes. He's an amazing athlete, incredibly strong, incredibly fast. Whereas you have a younger athlete who's developing his strength levels and that's going to be one of the things that's going to help him be able to move quicker. Now that being said, this also has uh, an impact on how he's going to be able to set positions in pillar one. We call it setting up the trigger, setting up the throwing chain reaction. So now what we're going to do is we'll look and you'll see that as we go to our pillar two, what we're doing is, is we're setting up that maximum power. We're teaching the athlete how to utilize the long entry arm. We're setting up how the axis works in the leg. And you're going to notice again the difference where Joe has always been historically up forward on the feet, which is great, which is how you're going to be able to move out and around the axis a lot more efficiently. And that's what this young thrower here is learning. So now what we'll do is as he moves into what we call pillar three, this is where we're going to have the sweep. And so you're going to notice the difference, especially when we go back here where we've dropped in. You're going to notice right there, you're going to look at how much faster Joe's sweep leg is. So that has to do with how we're moving aggressively off that leg. And you're going to see Kovacs, right, is really dynamic. You see the nice wide knees, the long entry. He really pulls himself into the throw. And we're trying to teach this young thrower kind of the same thing. How does that arm open around and get to this point? And again, we were teaching him how to be a little more active here. And you're going to notice when we do that, Joe's arm's going to be out here. And probably one of his changes here, which you saw in 2019, was he actually had the arm a little bit more open and he, there was a couple of nuanced style changes and technical changes that really enabled him to really get back on top and claim that world title. But again, you'll notice that what for sake of comparison, we're looking at wide knees. We're looking at the position of the foot. You notice how this thrower's foot is tends to be more down. Not a bad uh, sprint position, but you're going to notice that Joe actually has the shot back a touch more and there's and that's really talking about the he's going to begin the upper body lower body separation process so now what we do as as we go into our pillar four this is where we're really 
training the we call it the twist and wrap and so we'll refer to it as the axis transition and again this is going to be um you i'm going to do a comparison coming up on joe versus joe you know comparing 2017 joe to 2019 joe but at any rate <laughs> the point here is to see how we're teaching the athlete how to stretch hold right so we're creating separation and again, if you notice how the athlete's moving, uh, again, you're seeing some pretty close stuff. The, the left is moving to the board. The left move here moves to the board. And now we'll go right into the power position. And you're going to see that Joe really starts to accelerate at this point. This is the difference. There's that half second. And again, the concept with our six pillars is how are you going to work on all of these things in two seconds? You have to break the throw down and work your positions and then put those positions back together to work the fluid continuous accelerating motion of the throw. We look at the power position, you look at the length of the arm, look at how this is, I think, one of uh, Joe's high points of his technique, the way he's able to, he, he keeps the delivery heel up to create a really fast, powerful rotational axis. So you'll notice that our thrower here has the heel not quite as high and he has this foot opened a little bit more and we're trying to get that foot more into this position here where you see Joe's foot's aiming probably what we would say, you know, seven o'clock, 45 degrees kind of, but you see the feet setting up here. So this thrower, by pulling that foot open, is going to actually kind of create just a touch shift forward, whereas you're going to notice with most of your top elite guys, they're going to have that foot there because that's going to enable them to engage the block faster. And you're seeing that the heel generally comes down, which is something you didn't see as much in Joe's. 2291 throw so it's always interesting to look at here's a 73 foot throw versus 75 foot throw and those details are really small that could vary from throw to throw but his pr those were the keys that we saw so at any rate as we finish up here and we go into delivery now you're really going to see the difference of here's the athlete and he's kind of pushing now again this athlete was converting from the glide and you can see that He's doing a very nice job, but you'll notice how he's lost contact. You'll notice Joe really punches the hip through and where the arm's going to be striking through the shot. And you're going to see generally the chest and the hip coming through a little bit more on the elite. And there's where you're coming through and you see that big follow through there, right? So the point is, as we kind of go through and we go back, what can we see when we're looking at full speed? And what are we going to know to work on? So we obviously would slow it down. Everybody has a camera and can do that. And you can see now you can see a little bit more and you can do some comparison. But then when we start to look at things pillar to pillar, now we can really start to dissect a throw and learn to see our technique better and see how actually the difference between a young thrower who's been focusing for a week on learning the, the rotational throw from the glide is doing an exceptional job and how it's just gonna take time, strength development, technical development, but you see the difference between the basically a second and a half from the time the shot puts back to the time it leaves the hand to roughly just under two seconds for the young thrower. And the point of these videos is to show that the path that the thrower's on is actually very good, it just takes time and energy to develop the pattern and train the motor pattern so the body's gonna be able to do it efficiently, that's the trick. So again, hopefully you enjoyed today's kind of comparison to kind of just see when you see the what the, what the master's doing versus what the student's doing and seeing that they're on the right path, it just takes time and that's what you guys wanna keep in mind so you stay motivated and remember it's the fastest way to faster results is, is focusing on the right things and that's how you're going to get the big jumps. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to hit a thumbs up. If you have any comments below, if anybody you'd like to see a comparison of, let us know. And we will see you on the next video.